The NCBI Clone Database integrates information about clones and libraries, including sequence data, map positions, and distributor information. This video focuses on clone placement data using three examples. A companion video that focuses on CloneDB FTP content is linked at the end of this video. I'll start on the NCBI homepage. To get to the CloneDB homepage, select Clone in the database's pull-down menu and click Search. If you want background on how CloneDB generates clone placements, see this FAQ. Very briefly, clone placements are created by aligning end and insert sequences on genome assemblies annotated at NCBI. To generate a clone placement for end sequences, both ends, forward and reverse, must be placed on the same assembly molecule. Here are the three examples we'll cover. Find genomic clones that contain a gene of interest, use clone placements to recognize a genomic region with potential misassembly, and use clone placements to recognize potential structural variations. Let's first find clones for the WDR3 gene in chicken by searching CloneDB with this query, WDR3 with gene in square brackets, and chicken with organism in square brackets. On this day, that search returned 102 records. You see with the filters on the left, that these are all of the library type genomic from two vector types, BAC and FOSMID. We also see that 27 clone ends have been placed and 16 of those are concordant. All 102 end clones are from five different libraries. Let's filter to clones only from the distributor Cori. Then select for our example the first clone in the table that is noted as placed, CH261-52K22. Notice that I could have filtered for placed clones. We see an ideogram with the approximate chromosomal location of this clone. Below that are tabs with additional information, but let's focus on the genome view, which shows the selected clone placement in the context of known genes and other placed clones from the CH261 library. Blue clones are concordant, red clones are discordant. Hovering the mouse over any individual clone placement opens a tooltip that provides additional detail. We see that the WDR3 gene is just at the edge of a gap according to NCBI annotation and is interrupted by this gap according to the ensemble annotation. To examine this further, let's use another tool, the Genome Data Viewer. Currently, the GDV is best accessed through the organism's assembly page, so I'll search assembly for chicken and select the Gallus Gallus 5.0 assembly. Here we have a link, View the Genome, in the upper right. I'll click that, and we are now in the Genome Data Viewer. To get to the WDR3 gene region, use the search box on the left. We now see the WDR3 gene model. The next step is to add tracks for clone placements. From the Tracks menu, mouse over NCBI Recommended Track Sets, then select Assembly Support. This adds a predefined group of tracks, including clone placements for the three libraries with the largest number of placements. We can add tracks using the Configure Tracks menu, so I'll add the Ensemble Gene model. I'll go to Genes in the Configure menu and select Ensemble Release 87. While I'm here, I'll clean up the display a bit by changing the rendering options for the gene tracks to Gene Bar Only. And if you wanted to, you could add other clone placement tracks in the Genomic Clone set. I'll go down and hit the Configure button. You can also upload other data, such as one of the GFF files on the CloneDB FTP site. I'll adjust the zoom a bit in order to see both gene models and the assembly gap. I'll also add a marker for the gap region. and I'll need to zoom out a bit more and scroll down to see the clones better. Clones with unique concordant placements are displayed as solid blue lines. For example, here is that CH261 clone we looked at earlier. Unique discordant clones display as a solid red line and multiple discordant clones display as a dotted red line. This clone also has a gray background, indicating that not all end sequences associated with the clone support this placement. 
If your goal is to find clones with unique concordant placements that contain this assembly gap, several are seen here. Note that this goal can be accomplished in the CloneDB page for one of these clones. Let's move on to the second example, a very quick look at using clone placements to assess the quality of an assembly, in this case to recognize a genomic region with potential misassembly. I've moved over to chicken chromosome Z, and we see a dramatic change in placements from unique concordant to discordant at about 72 megabases. This change occurs in all three libraries, indicating a likely misassembly in this region. The DNA source for this Gallus Gallus 5.0 assembly is the same as in the CH261 library, but different in the other two libraries, further supporting a misassembly here. In the final example, we look at clone placements that indicate possible structural variations. I've moved over to chromosome 21, and here we see a few smaller regions in the JAC and JAD libraries with placement of both concordant and discordant clones. This mixture is an indication of structural variation. Notice that the end clones from the CH261 library have only concordant placements in these regions. Remember that the source sequence for CH261 is different from the other two libraries, leaving open the possibility of genomic variation in these regions. That concludes this tutorial. Please use the Support Center link on the CloneDB homepage for your questions and feedback. We would love to hear from you. And if you want more detail about the CloneDB placement process, see the NCBI Bookshelf chapter and the January 2013 database issue of Nucleic Acids Research.